Welcome to Triple Threat, the podcast with Jamel President, where it's good news and good vibes all the time, baby. When we left Portugal to come play with you and your system, Jamel, it was the best thing for Shane because you, you, you pushed him to do other things outside his box. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Jamel President and on Twitter at President Jamel. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast as I'll be bringing you a new interview every month. Hey, what's up, guys? Coming up next, we got Trey McLean, um, a local product, West Ashley High School. Um, and, you know, this guy came came on the scene, wanted to be a, a, a collegiate student athlete, worked his butt off. Um, and now he's at the point where he can, you know, change his, his family narrative. Um, great information about coming from Charleston, South Carolina, um, going to school, and then play, playing on the professional level. So um, I'm really excited about this interview to hear about a local product uh, making it out. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into the interview. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, bro. I appreciate you coming on. You know, um, what we tried to do is just, um, you know, talk to, you know, collegiate athletes, uh, professional athletes, agents, uh, families, and try to get the word out on, you know, um, how this thing is done. You know what I mean? From recruiting mm -hmm. the things you've done and, and all that. So it's no better, you know, experience than getting it from, you know, the horse's mouth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going to first we're gonna start off, man, you know, you're from a, a, the downtown West Ashley, all that mix up area. So, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, first we're going to talk about, you know, the, the, the groundwork, um, the recreation part, elementary school, when you first started and, um, you know, what type of support system, support system type of programs you've been in um, and uh, to kind of help, you know, enlighten and get you going when you were younger. Yeah, man. So, um, man, I gotta think all the way back. Yeah. So I started, um, you play football too. You play for my dad, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 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 So before that, my mom, we were, uh, I started out on Mall Park. My mom was coaching. She was my first coach actually. Wow. Um, wow. This, this, not, this was when, uh, we was living right there on Columbus street. For so, sure. um, yeah, so we uh she was my first coach on Mall Park, man. And um, you know, that's when like I said, I think we was five and six. Right. I think, yeah, I think that was around right. like four or five, five or six. And right. then um so then of course we that's when uh she moved us and we didn't move, we still staying on the east side, but that's when she took us over, took me over to City Gym. For sure. And I and in the old in the old city gym, and so that's when we um I went over there and started hooping over right. there. Right, right. Um, and I think that's still, I think that's still around the same time that she started going to Ebenezer. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's what she met your dad at, but, um, mm -hmm. or she already had knew him, but that's when I, you know, when I started playing football, we went over there um, For sure. to play on Harmon Park. So that's what, um, you know, that was the beginning of it. And, um, that was the foundation, man. Uh, you know, I learned a lot from those times, man. Got a lot, you know what I'm saying? Created a Created a lot of good relationships. Still, you know, what I'm saying, still got some friends from uh, from those times till this day. For that, sure, uh, you know, still support me. That still, we still talk once a week, man. Um, you know, for sure, great relationships like like the one, you know, what I'm saying with your dad, man. <sighs> man, dog, you know, what I'm saying your dad been supporting me since day, like really since day one, since the, since that time. You know, what I'm saying, right, right. Different times, like I remember getting to school and your dad the one coming to. <laughs> <laughs> like he don't like he don't want coming to talk to me, coming to, you know what I'm saying, coming to talk to me and the teacher to make sure everything all right. So um, for sure. For sure. you know, that's just like like that's the, the support system that you know what I'm saying that I was uh that I was fortunate enough to be uh to have since day one. You know, for sure. you know thank you for my mom, you know what I'm saying, for putting me in in that in those in those environments, you know what I'm saying, that that helped mold me and helped create that foundation. For sure. So, um, so when did it click? You know what I mean? Like, um, when did it click? You, you know, middle school, 
um, you know, because everybody started, mm-hmm. you know, playing JV or just started experiencing different, mm-hmm. you know, levels of basketball in middle school. But when did it click? Because, you know, you 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 were, you know, 4'11", you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. until, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> until what happened. And, and it just, you know, just had that, that's, that's, that spark, but mm-hmm. um, what what triggered the, the the focus? Was it you know middle school? Was it was it people you're looking up to in high school? What, what, what triggered mm-hmm. that? Man, of course you know just being a young kid, you know just in that downtown, just coming out the city, you know sports. If you're a boy, everybody wants you to play sports. Everybody wants you to play sports. So you know I was just playing sports just because you know that's what everybody did as kids. That's sure. what we all did. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, Man, and to be honest, like like I said, at first it was just, I was just doing it just cause this is what everybody did, of course, you know, or what you want to be, I want to go to the NFL, I want to go to the NBA. But I was really just saying, I was just saying that just cause that's what, you know what I'm saying? That, that's, what, that's what they tell you, that's what they tell you you're supposed to do to be successful. So, um, so yeah, man, I mean, in middle school, I was just, I was always just doing it. Of course, you know, when I was a kid, man, it, Ralph and Sid, they was gods, man. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. coming in the city, man, them gods, man. For sure. And so, and then, and then you get introduced to my life and I see you, you know what I'm saying? And, and your dad telling me, telling me your story. And I'm For like, sure. all right. So, man, there is somebody who looked like me, come from where I'm from. And you know what I'm saying? He he went to college here. He did it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Then you you went and did it on a professional level. And so it's like, all right, at that point now I'm starting, I see, I can see it. For sure. I got people walking around, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm seeing, I'm hearing what Ralph and Sid do. I said we played on I played on Holland Field. I was the quarterback on the younger team. It was the, yeah. Ralph was the quarterback on the older team. So For sure. like that's where. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm seeing that. That's my motive. Like, that's they was real motivation. They was gods to me. I always, um, I always laugh. When, you know, when, when we talk about when you were playing quarterback, and you know, you be, you basically could have seen, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over the line. You know what I mean? No, yeah, but, man. <laughs> but but you always was talented. You always had heart. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you could, you could, you were the smallest guy out there, but you had the biggest heart on the field, and that always was <laughs> noticeable. No, because like like I said, man, because. Like I said, man, Ralph, like Ralph was like Ralph, that's big bro, man. Even still to this day, like that's big bro. Like you watch them dudes play, they play hard, they go hard, man. Like they go hard, man. And so like when I see that, I'm like, all right, like that's what I gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Sure. For sure. People talking about them, this is at the, like at the time, this is success to me. For sure. So that's what so I gotta emulate, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta replicate that. I gotta do that. Like that's success to me. So I'm finna go hard. I don't see no quitting them. So it's gonna be, sure. ain't no quitting me. You For know sure. what I'm saying? And then like once I got with Ashley, like of course now I'm not, I'm not in the downtown environment no more. When I really move as Ashley, I'm like, damn, we move to the suburbs. It's different over here. It's a little different sure. over this side. So, but I know where I still come from. So I, I so now. I go with Ashley, they ain't necessarily coming like how we was coming on on the east side, on the west side. Like they ain't necessarily coming like that. So yes, I'm still like, man, I'm I'm still going hard. This with this way. I know, like, so that just and people just always love that. And I just uh really on that court, man, Coach Johnny. I don't know if you remember Johnny. Johnny so, Dupree? Um, yeah, big Johnny. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Johnny. I remember Johnny first told me it was like a little all-star team they did really playing the city gym. And Johnny, like, so it was kids, all the best teams from all from the rec league. Yep. And Johnny was like, hey, all these kids can score because I like to score. As a kid, I like to score, man. For sure. I'm trying For to be sure. Jordan. For so sure. Johnny like, man, I got people who can score. But he was like, the only way I can play you is if you play defense. Mm. Johnny like, Man, you gotta stand at half court and wait for your man. Your toes gotta be on half court. Sure. And wait for your man. I need you to lock him down. That's how you gonna play. Sure. Well, I took that to heart because I'm like, hey man, I'm not gonna sit on this bench today. Yes, sir. Yeah, I went out there and played defense and ever since then, like, like I just was like, hey, this if it worked, I, like I said, I gotta keep doing it. Like, sure. if it ain't broke, I ain't gonna fix it. So 
man, as far as like on that court, just like, man, that's how I'm finna just play like them. Just finna play ball Let me ask you a question. You know, you know, and, and like you said, and even talking to Travis, playing at a public school versus going to Skeezer, that's a big difference, mm-hmm. right? That transition mm-hmm. and aggression, right? So mm-hmm. coming from downtown, going to West Ashley, you recognize, you know what I'm saying, the the, the intensity. It's it's just a big, mm-hmm. it's a big gap. Um, do you think that played a part in your, you know, your success and your productiveness? You're not saying that you didn't have talent, but do you think, you know, as athletes, and we talk about this with all, a lot of our guests, just don't have that grit and tenacity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's act that kind of like word of the way. Do you think mm-hmm. coming from the the downtown area, then transitioning to the suburbs, that that helped you with your your, your game performance per se? For sure, man. Cause some of the stuff that we was a like that you do down that we was doing in the city, you like you got was actually I was doing some of that stuff. They were like, hey, hold on, look, like hey, hold <laughs> on, man, you tripping, dog? Like, right, <laughs> right. you tripping, but and I'm just kind of like, but you know. Down here, like that's that's game, like sure. that's game. But hard fouls, going hard, yeah, yeah. they going hard. So people Taking that like, pride even, and let nobody score you. Yeah, so it's like, like you know, down here we playing outside on the parks all day, like especially back then, like for sure. You gonna, you gonna play basketball? You gonna play basketball on the park? So for sure, and yeah, for sure. Like once I had went, like once I got West Ashley, it was just a little bit different, like. It was a little different, you know. They still, they they still was playing hard, you know. That's just in Charleston in general. In Charleston, we gonna play hard, we gonna go hard. Don't nobody really care like what you, you know. what I'm saying what your name is, what your resume is. Exactly. You, every time you step on that court, you definitely you gonna prove have it. to prove. Right. You have to prove it. So that's Charleston in general, but definitely like going, coming from you know what I'm saying coming from downtown, we moved to Ashley. It was uh, it definitely was a little a little bit a little different, but uh, you know, I was bringing something that. Every time I stepped on the floor, I was I knew for a fact I was gonna bring something that they necessarily weren't doing over in West Ashley. Cause this is even the same, you know what I'm saying? When you watch Burke, like like people talk about Burke and West Ashley do da 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 da, but I'd be like, yeah. Did you did you we, did you did obviously you wanted to go to Burke too? Man, I wanted to go to of course, cause like man. <laughs> You know, you know when Bert play all the little kids, they warming up. You know, yeah. you sitting up under the goal. Yeah, you know, all the all the old heads, they walk past like, hey, y'all stand right here. This y'all y'all next. Sure. So sure. that's what I've been seeing. You know what I'm saying? I'm watching. I'm watching Trey Young and Daniel. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Trey. Can't Young, wait to be big, my turn. I can't yeah, wait. Like to that's be. big. Like yeah. that's big, bro. I I I, I watched Big Bro all the way up to even you know what I'm saying South Carolina State. Like for sure. Like like them the dudes. Like them the type of dudes that I looked up to. You know what I'm saying? Cause we in the city. Like you go to Burt. You know what I'm saying? That's where you go to. <clears throat> but when the time came for me to go to West Ashley, you know it was just like, man, that's what I gotta do. But once I got West Ashley. I was in middle school and then I heard the name Terrell Everett. Mm. I didn't know who that was. Mm. I heard of Terrell Everett and they talked about this man like he was a ghost, like a beast. So beast. I'm hearing these stories because at the time I'm like in my head, I'm like, man, like I said, I know Daniel, I know, you know what I'm saying, Trey, like Rob said, like them the names I know, like. Like them, the people I know, you know what I'm saying, coming out the city. And so, and I hear this dude to Red every and people was talking about this man, like he is just, man. <laughs> so, I'm like, hey, who this dude that I never heard of this dude, man? And so, um, you know, my sister was going to West Ashley at the time. And so, she was a cheerleader. So, my mama used to go to the games. Yeah. So, once I started going to these games at West Ashley, you know, I just start to, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm in that environment, I'm seeing it. Mm. I'm seeing it. And it was just different. This dude was cold, man. Like, this dude was cold. And so now I'm like, I'm already over here. My mama don't necessarily want to send me back to the city. Um, <clears throat> of course, at the time, I, I I really didn't understand why, but now I'm thankful for it. But it's just like, and that's, some, that's like something that's kids, we don't we don't really understand what our parents' mm-hmm. movements are, but it's you know, I'm pretty sure, and obviously, you know, she was putting you in a in a in, in a better environment. Like what you mm-hmm. needed to, to sustain, you already had that in your bloodline. You mm-hmm. already had that in your makeup, right? Mm-hmm. So now I was taking those 
those those those those skills and those things that you you've learned in the city and transferring them into another area. And that's what it's all about. Life is all about transition. Can you do the same thing downtown? You do West Ashley, North Charleston. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't the mm-hmm. environment is you that can cause that change. And, and you did that well. In this timeout session, we got Carl Thomas. Naturally, I was always competitive. Said was my said was like my nemesis. If I'm gonna be on a team with someone, I'm gonna either be the one of the stars or I'm gonna share the stardom. I'm not a selfish guy, and you have to be selfish to a certain extent at the next level. And um, uh, and I think I had it. Like I said, it was times and nights that said would call me and say, "Hey, let's go. Um, let's go train. You gonna train tonight?" I would tell him no, because I knew I was going in the gym, but I gotta. Call you tomorrow, said I'm not gonna train with you. What you think? What you think this is? You feel me? <laughs> now let's get back to the interview. Oh, yeah. uh, moving at the high school, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? What's what were your numbers like? What were your your biggest robbery? Your your, your best your biggest game? When did when did it click? So you like you Man. know what? I like the sport. I like this game, but now you know what? I'm getting letters. I'm getting looks. Mm-hmm. So, I- at high school, I ain't gonna lie. I'm still so, so. Once I got to West Ashley, I still was really just doing it, just to be doing it. To be honest, I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm just doing it. Of course, I'm like, all right, I I want to, but right. do I really want to? I wouldn't really. I wasn't really going for. It. I really wouldn't like put my all into it because. Again, you still just an athlete in Charleston. Like, you know, we try like we trying to get put our hands in it. We trying to live this life and that life. For sure. You for sure. Be, you wanna be gangster, you wanna be a basketball player, you wanna do all this. For sure. And so at this time, I'm still really just doing it just to be doing it. It ain't even had clicked yet once I got to West Ashley. I had just found out that I had a, another brother, Rashad Richardson, who played at James Island. Uh. You know, playing at Georgia State. So I, I had just like had start to meet my brother and I had met, I found out by him because his face was in front of Post and Curry average like 23 his sophomore year. For sure. And it was crazy because I'm I'm sitting this, I was in like eighth grade towards the end of my eighth grade. Year. I'm like, dang, man, this dude called him in front of the newspaper. I'm like, this is the time Ralph was sitting there. They in the newspaper too. So I'm like, on live five, all that. So I'm like, man, I want to get there. Because you know, I just want publicity at the sure. I'm a young guy. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, I go home that day. My older brother, he coming there. He like, man. This our brother. And I'm like, man, I'm just looking at this in class early. This man ain't my brother. I don't know this right. dude. And so they can't find out it's my brother. So like that like had added another mm. like extra motivation. Cause now I find out I got a brother who doing it. You know what For I'm sure. saying? Like, sure. like this man in my blood and he doing it. For so sure. now I'm in high school and I'm like, man, I was like, all right. Just keep, you know what I'm saying, grinding, keep, you know what I'm saying, doing what I do. JV come. It was cool. Like, I was good. I wasn't going to open your eyes <laughs> right. when I walked in the gym. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But right. it was cool. Like, right. I would have played. I wasn't going to turn your head, though. People knew who I was. For sure. Because I had been, I lived multiple places, so people knew me, but. I was just cool as people better than me. I was better than some others, but it was cool. Um, I was probably one of the better freshmen on the team, but the one thing that the one thing that kept me like would always like separate me just was I was a knucklehead, but mm-hmm. I just wouldn't I just wouldn't like no distract I wasn't a distraction. For sure. You get what I'm saying? That's yeah, one thing. He had a knucklehead mentality would cause that aggression on the court. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I went a distraction. And you know, right. one thing coaches ain't finna deal with is a distraction. For sure. You can be a knucklehead. For sure. But if you a distraction, they don't want no parts of you. Cause they, they know you a knucklehead. They actually like knuckleheads, basically. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like in re- reality, they want that. Cause they want who gonna, somebody who ain't gonna be scared. Dog. So, yeah, so that's the kind of what separated me because, like I said, you know, just young athletes in Charleston, they don't, they want to be a distraction. Like they want it to be about them, but they don't know that's that. The thing, and that's the thing, what I do, what I do, Trey, because you know what I'm saying? I, I was a knucklehead. You know what I mean? All mm-hmm. of us grew up in the Charleston area that mm-hmm. way, but we were able to, you know, 
to 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 improvise, right? Mm -hmm. But that's only a that's only that's only two out of ten of us. Mm -hmm. You feel me? What if what mm -hmm. if Ralph and Sydney had the major support? You know what I'm saying that that everybody mm -hmm. else had. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. how that would have turned out. And that's why we do what we do so hard because it's all about information. It's all about mm -hmm. talking to guys like yourself, saying, "Hey, man, I looked up to these guys. These these guys have motivated me, and now I'm here today." And, mm -hmm. and that's a story that's not being told. We can always glorify, you know, you putting the ball in the basket. But look, what about mm -hmm. what about your story? What about what, mm -hmm. what motivates you? What about what keeps sure you motivates you? What about the turbulence in your life? And that's what it's all about. So talk I'm about sure. you know you you know you, you, your senior year, or you're playing. Um, and, 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 and you start getting looks. What, how, how did that recruitment, how did all that start to come about? Uh, so to be honest, so this kind of when it clicked, man. So um, my sophomore year, that's when I played with DeMontre Edwards, oh. uh, dang, Matt, CJ, Earl Lawrence, Donovan Burns. I played with them dudes mm -hmm. and, you know, DeMontre, Matt, them dudes is on like this, like this is the year where it's like Bruce, Slauson, Trav, like K Mid had just came through. Right. Um, so like now, like these dudes, uh, what's the dude that was a Mickey D's? I can't remember him, but uh it was like guys, you know what I'm saying? And they was going places. For and sure. so, like I said, I I played with the Montre and Matt, and them dudes was getting real looks. So that had like motivated me. So now I'm like, all right. I knew I made the right decision because these coaches at West Ashley, mm. you know what I'm saying? I now I see for a fact that hey, I can get up out of here. For sure. I can do this. I can do this. I see it. Like I see it. And I play with these dudes. So like I see. It. So my next year I played, numbers went in great. Like I said, it was cool. I think I ever find like eight or nine. I wasn't gonna turn your head though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I right. was just. I play, I just play, I play super hard. I wasn't gonna never back down. It was cool. But so then once them dudes graduated though, you know, now it's time to step up. Right. And like the pre looking at me like, hey, them dudes ain't coming back through that though. <laughs> For sure. It's time to step up. Like what you gonna do? Like, do you really want it? And the pre the type of coach that's like, he gonna ask you, he only gonna ask you a few times. Right. If you don't want it, then he ain't gonna force it upon you. For sure. So like you're gonna have to go get it. And so um like after my junior year was coming to my senior year, the pre was like, I want you to go play for TMP. And at the time, like I said, TMP, they had guys. So mm -hmm. again, I'm looking at TMP as if like, man, like that's where the dudes go who's successful. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, right. like, all right, like let me go try this out. For sure. You get what I'm saying? So um I go to TMP and it's dudes in my class. Some dudes I never seen before, but these dudes talented. Some dudes I have seen before, but you know what I'm saying? I was a sophomore, I was a sophomore. Some of these dudes was on varsity, they was playing major minutes. For sure. I wasn't playing at all. But so we get to this trial and I wasn't the best at the trial, but I did what I needed to do. And I made the team. Right. Um, now I was on that team, I ain't gonna lie, probably about the first half of that summer, I was a knucklehead, I was a distraction, dog. <laughs> and all in all honesty, bro, JP and Saunders probably should have sent my ass home, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I was a distraction, bro. I was in practice wearing the jersey backwards, like, yeah, dog, like, man, man, dog. I was a <laughs> I was just wasting the opportunity, bro. Like For sure. Like I'm going out to these tournaments, missing layups. Like they and they putting us in front of people. For sure. And so um, you know what I mean? But they stuck with me. Um, you know, they, they can sound them, but they opened their arms to me. They like, and they I think Saunders had sat me down one time and just was like, I think Saunders told me he was about to see he had called the pre, the pre had sat me down. And I think Saunders, Saunders don't never stop talking. So <laughs> Saunders had like sat me down and <laughs> It just was like, just he just told me what it was. Like, hey man, we don't really know about you. Like, but what you showed us, we ain't, we ain't know why you like, kind of like, we ain't know why you here. Mm. And this is what you finna be doing. Mm. And you know, that's, that had kind of just hit home. Cause like I said, I had seen, like I hadn't seen all these other dudes and then just being in Portugal, being around in Portugal, I think this is the time when Chris was about to get drafted. 
Right, right. And right. I think Chris had just came home for a couple weeks and we had walked, I had walked in the gym, Chris was shooting. And uh, I think JP or somebody was like, yeah, he, he might be a lottery pick. Mm. And I was like, and I'm watching him. And I'm just like, boy, he's about to be a lottery pick. Like, well, he's about mm. to change his people's life, dog. Mm. Like, mm. man. And I think at, in that, like, in all honesty, dog, that's when that, that's when it clicked, sure. bro. That's sure. when it clicked. Cause I was like, I seen him just in here. He went playing around. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Saunders had told me, Saunders, like, man, we doing five on oh, you jogging through five on oh. Like, he was like, he's like, you here? Like, the reason you here is to go to college. But what you doing, but what you doing ain't even, that ain't even, that ain't college. Like you ain't getting ready. You ain't, you ain't trying to, right. like what you doing ain't showing that that's what you trying to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't play, hey, you got to play for some of the, like some of these other AU teams in the area. But, and I always tell people like, what you going to learn at TMP? You ain't, these other people ain't, these other AU teams ain't necessarily even going to tell you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because they never been there. Exactly. Exactly. They ain't never been there. They trying to, you got a high school coach telling you stuff. He trying to tell you high school stuff, but <laughs> whereas TMP, like I said, they had the products, man. Sure. They, had they already the, had, had the- They had a proven record that it, it works. Man. And you get, and they got coaches who talk to these college coaches every single day. And it might not even be about players. It could be about basketball. So they got the insight. For sure. You know what I'm saying? As to, as to what, what it's going to take to make it. For sure. In college basketball, man. So when Saunders had told me that and I saw K Men, man, that's kind of when that whole thing had clicked, man. And it was just like, all right. Like, um, I was like, all right. Like, I just got to, it was hard. I had to make a change. You know what I'm saying? So when you, so when you made when you made that change, you know, when we talk about re- recruiting, did you uh do you went to junior college first? Mm-hmm. You, no, so what ha- so what happened was man, it was like one tournament we was playing with TMP and this way it came back to what Johnny told me about defense, dog. Like on my team, I went scoring. I probably averaged like six points that whole summer, man. Mm. Like of course, you know, in TMP, everybody good. So you only, you're not even gonna play a lot, but because everybody good, but it's gonna make you better. For so sure. man, when we played one game and I can't remember where we was at, we was losing. And Saunders the one giving me no minutes like that. They ain't used to play because I was playing around all the For time. Sure. So For they sure. weren't playing me. And so they put me in. And I just was going, I just played defense. I just played my butt off, dog. And, like, and that jump we just reverted back to like that foundation, you know what I'm saying? To, to, to taking in certain things that's going to carry you along the way. And I played, I just played super hard, man. We gained up coming back and winning. I made some nice plays, got a couple of dunks, got a couple of steals, got a couple of nice, you know what I'm saying? Some rebounds and sure. And Queens was at the game. Queens University of Charlotte was at the game. And that's when they started, uh, you know what I'm saying? They had sent me a letter and stuff like that. South Carolina State, they was recruiting me. Because cause after that game, I started playing well the rest of the summer. Like, I right. played really it well. It kind of clicked for you. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, Charleston Southern, the Citadel, some other, just some like some other D2s. I can't remember off the top of my head. So all these schools were like <laughs> sending me letters and stuff like that. South Carolina State, Charleston Southern, they would come to uh, practice at West Ashley when that school year started. Um, I had went on a visit, my first visit. I went on to uh, to South Carolina State. Right. It was me, Daryl Palmer, and uh, Shaquille Mitchell from Baptist Hill. So all three of us went on this visit. And um, essentially, I, what I believe happened is that them, those two, they, had, they only had two scholarships. Right. Those two went in their meetings first. Uh, they ended up taking those scholarships, and I didn't get one. I believe that's kind of what happened. I'm not sure. For sure. But, um, that's kind of, that's what happened. And so, so I you, missed out on that. Hey, what's up, guys? Check this out. If you're coming into the Charleston area, or maybe leaving out the Charleston area, and you want to avoid long lines and be greeted by friendly, sweet people, go check out Mark over at Avis and Budget Car Rental at 7685 Northwoods 
Boulevard. When you go see Mark and you mention Triple Threat Podcast, you receive 30% discount on your rental. They also offer compact to large SUVs and vans to rent with quick, easy transaction. And check us out. And limited mileage on most rentals. So give Mark a call at 843-572-3190. Don't forget to mention Triple Threat Podcast. But but let me ask you a question because I, I was talking to a guy the other day about <clears throat> the, the, the degree of difficulty. And, you know, most athletes, you know, pick colleges because of what they're comfortable with. You know, I know this mm-hmm. person, you know, I know that person, um, but really it's because it's the team running the style of play or mm-hmm. um, I'm comfortable, I'm not comfortable, but uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the coach has got a certain amount of uh, years in the contract. So I got to go mm-hmm. make a move. I mean, it's all kind of different mm-hmm. things, but mm-hmm. when you were being recruited by those schools, did you kind of, you know, you know, looked at Queens as not a, a high degree of difficulty versus like a, a Wake Forest? You, did you kind of like compare? I don't want to, it's not really, I'm not really, I'm better than this, this opportunity. To be honest, no, nah, dog. And to be honest, this is my first time even thinking about that. I ain't had nobody to tell me that, dog. Mm. I really didn't. I really mm. didn't. Mm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Jamil was getting recruited at the same time. So I was kind of, you know, listening to stuff that Mr. Zola was, was, you know what I'm saying? Tips and For stuff sure. that they was telling me just about Jamil recruiting process. So I, I had like that in my ear. Um, sure. But man, when I went to South Carolina State, I don't, I had my cousin, my older cousin and my mama, we went. And I was just kind of like, I don't know, like, I mean, my cousin was just talking about it. It was just like, I don't know, some I didn't even like feel comfortable. I was like, man, if they offer me cuz I don't already know what I'm gonna do. Like, <laughs> cuz man, cuz like it was South Carolina State, but I'm like, are they really going? Right, right. Like, what's gonna happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's really gonna happen? So I think it, you know what I'm saying? It was God working, like God was doing doing what he do, man. And uh, it kind of, it worked itself out once I got the, so when I lost out on that scholarship, cause it was just kind of like once that day, like once that football game was over, it was kind of, all right, we'll holler at you later. I never heard from him. For sure, for sure. So, um, so then that fo- I think either like that following week or the week after next, Queens had done that came to West Ashley and they was telling me, you know, how they they were super just involved, man. Coach, sure. uh, Coach Taylor, the assistant coach and Coach Long, like they had came multiple times. Um, you know, they just had showed like just they showed that yeah, that interest. And I was just so when I went up there and. <clears throat> It was just like they had a family, like like you can tell it was a family environment. They had a lot of guys that was similar to me. Like I was a tweener, like nobody really knew what position sure. I played. Like sure. I said, I went, I went overly skilled, dog, at the time. I'm still not overly skilled. Right. Like so nobody really knew. But when I got up there, it was it was guys that, like I said, were like me, like were like low level D1, could play D2, they could play D1. They just wanted to hoop, but they were all, you know what I'm saying? They were brothers. And so when I went and they, up and they I all, saw that. You all got, you all guys are missing the same thing you just said was that skill development part. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, those things that separate you, <clears throat> but you made a key point. What you said, he's like, man, I didn't have nobody to, to tell me those things. Mm-hmm. And and that's the reason, think about how many athletes fall be, fall between the wayside is because they don't have the support, have the information to tell them or uh, directing them, you know, when environment that's more, you know, effective for them. So mm-hmm. again, that's when we reiterate, that's the reasons, you know, why this podcast is, is, is so, so powerful. So take us back to, you know, the queen, the queen years where, you know, what, what, what was the one thing that you learned, you know what I mean? From after you made that adjustment and you started maturing a little bit, what was one thing you learned from being a student athlete coming from, you know, the Charleston area, you know, very limited, um, exposure and experience. Now you mm-hmm. get into Queens College where you got to wake up by yourself. You got to go to school. So all those, all those things that you, and I know your mom. She's very listen. I know your mom. <laughs> don't play no <laughs> game. Hey, bro. You feel me? So you don't play for real, man. Nathaniel. <laughs> Nathan. So, so when you got that structure, 
And then you mm-hmm. got to transition without that structure, without mm-hmm. that helicopter support. You know, mm-hmm. well, how did you deal with that? Hey, to be honest, that wasn't even like, it wasn't really that that much of a, like my mama don't play, so <laughs> that was like, like, but she ain't played, but at the same time, I had, I had really like grew up fast. You know, you're in Charleston yeah. and I'm a single parent home. Yeah, I've been doing some of the stuff I ain't supposed to have been doing. Sure. So by the time sure. I got to college, For sure. It was just kind of, I was like, man. I ain't missing out on nothing. Yeah, yeah man, that's whack, man. Like, right. y'all just doing, like, y'all just not doing that. So right. I was right. just more of, and then I kind of got like in a little bit of trouble before I had got the queen. So my coach, Coach Long, had told me, was like, hey, like, we got like a three strike rule. And I ba- he basically was just kind of like, you really don't, you really done waste three strikes, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so I've been just kind of like, man, I can't lose this because I would disappoint my mom and disappoint my for family. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So once I got the Queens, as far as like school and stuff, I was kind of like, man, you know, I'm, I'm going to do what I need to do. So um, it was, to me, it was, it was a just a crazy culture shock just because the black kids, they all those were athletes. For sure. For sure. So, you know what I'm saying? You in the class, Queens in a big school, so you in the class with probably like 20 kids. Mm. Mm. And you most likely, if you ain't in a class with your teammates, you the only one that look like you. For sure. For and sure. And since it's a class of like 20 kids, this is a class that's really interactive. So mm. Mm. you can you gotta focus. You sh- you got to, you show up late, everybody know you late, you didn't do your homework, everybody know you didn't do your homework. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You you didn't read that chapter last night, your name is gonna be called to answer mm. this question. And mm. if you get up there and you look like you don't know what you're talking about, even though it's only 20 people, you're just gonna look like a fool. And like I said, right. for me, these people didn't look like me. And the last thing I wanted to is to be, you know what I'm saying, the, stereoty- the stereotypical college basketball player for sure so for sure. i had sure. so to be so because and i think because you know growing up in charleston and how charleston is as far as like you know this environment this racial environment in charleston sure. because of that um that had that really had prepared me for once i got the queens because like i said I, i'm not about to come now i ain't gonna be no food bro mm. like i know where i really come from so i don't need to play the part because exactly. i am that so i don't gotta exactly. play that because exactly. I am that, so since I am that, I'm going to show you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, sure. I, I, I come from a family of hustlers, you know what I'm For saying? Sure. I grew up in an environment around hustlers, so I just took it as this this education. It's my hustle right now. This basketball sure. is my hustle right now, so I, I'm going to hustle. This one, For sure. For so, sure. Um, like, so like I said, because my mama had really, that, that home, my mama don't play, that discipline, that's just how I, that just carried on into you know time management and doing this that and the third. I really I really did I really wanted to come home though. I called my mom. I was like, man, mama, I can't do this. Come pick sure. me up. I quit. I'm coming home for sure. But, and people don't know, understand. Kids don't understand. Everybody want to you know play at the college level, or get scholarship. They don't know the time management and the sacrifice that goes into that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's, it's a different animal to, to, to come out of that. So you got to be a different animal going into that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that, you know, that's, that's why it's, it's, it's so important that, you know, your, your stories, you know, are heard. So, you know, going into, you know, your, your career at, uh, at Queens, um, take us into the, you know, the re- re- recruitment part is the next level, uh, and you know, how that turned around because, right. um, you know, everybody looking for the agent, everybody looking for somebody to come, mm-hmm. you know, put them on and it's a struggle. It's, it's, it's mm-hmm. a time. Um, w- what happened from your senior year? And how you transition into into the next career, your your, your, uh, your, right. your uh, life. So um, after my freshman year at Queens, my coach left, went to chat Chattanooga. So he called me like, Trey, what you gonna do? I'm like, man, dog. Like I said, I called my mom, I want to go home. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going home, I'm going back to Charleston, bro. Like, right. I'll go to a JUCO or something. So. Sure. He was like, man, he really liked me just because of my character. He had came to Charleston a couple of times and he from, he from uh, like right outside Columbia. So, sure. you know, he loved Charleston. So he always came, so he always come to Charleston and like, we just clicked. We had a, we got, we got a real good relationship. 
we still talk to this day. So um, sure. he ended up taking me to Chattanooga with him. Long story short, I ended up going to chat with him. Um, that's why I played for Coach Wade for one. For yeah, I played. I red shirted, sat out, played the next year. Average like five points. Um, that next after that season, Coach Wade leaves. Coach McCall comes in from Florida. Um, and Coach McCall was just, I mean, we had a workout one day and Coach McCall, like one of the first days he got there and just looked at me and just like, man, no reason why you shouldn't be an all-conference player. Mm. Um, at this point, you know, that's when I kind of grew into my body. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I'm saying? So uh, you grew in college, you grew like two or three inches in college then. I know, it, yeah, once I got to college, I kind of was still growing. I think once I was like, like my senior in high school, I, got, I grew to like six, three, six, mm -hmm. four. Mm -hmm. So and then once, you know, once I got the college, I grew like an, another inch or two. So once so you, you listen to that now, six, 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 seven, which one? Like, like six, 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 five, six, six. So that's you. Yeah. So you man, six, seven, it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. So once uh, that, when McCall came, that's the year, you know, we went crazy at chat, man. We had some guys returning, man. I think we went like 20, 29 and eight, something like that, man. We opened the season up at Georgia, we went in there, beat them in OT, and it was just crazy after that. For went sure. to Illinois, smacked them, went on the road at Dayton, smacked them. For sure. And man, we was just rolling, dog. Um, ended up going to the NCAA tournament that year. This is my junior year. <clears throat> yeah, I was watching that. And then, yeah. uh, and then um, you know, that was an amazing year, man. That was, that, that year taught me a lot. Um, it was a great experience. And then that next year, that was my senior year. So, um, you know, this is now, um, I had, at the time it's a term, I had agents calling me because I could have left mm. and I, or I could have transferred. So mm. I had agents calling me then because they like, man, you just came up this crazy. Yeah, I was really supposed to be player of, play of the year in the Southern Conference. Wow. Um, Cause we won, we won a regular season and the conference wow. tournament. Yeah, and I was like top five and like, eight different categories, dog, like. Wow. Like, I'm talking about, man, I was hungry, dog, like, sure. and I was just fine. And it was just kind of like, my preparation from a kid all the way up until now was like, start, like that joint just had, it was perfect timing. Like my hard work was say finally that. catching up, bro. Like, I was gonna say that, you know, hey, hey, you are a kid, you know, going from, you know, the East Side, the West Ashley, the Queens to Chattanooga. And, and mm -hmm. that, like you said at the beginning, you don't know what the hell is going on. You just do mm -hmm. it just to do it. And that's what, mm -hmm. that's what life brings us, right? As long as we, you know, you know, we, we, we stay within our, our goals, you know, things, things start to happen. So in Chattanooga, I watched the tournament, I watched you play and make big noise. And I said, oh man, Trey starting to get on. And then boom, you know, your senior year, take us, take us back to, you know, what happened with coming out of Chattanooga, Chattanooga where agents and, you know, people wanted to, to get with you. In this timeout session, we got Joe Chile. We just kind of had this conversation about where it started back in, in middle school, getting cut and stuff. And in seventh grade is when I kind of decided, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to play professionally, right? And, and so I felt that, man, I, I really worked my whole life um, for this opportunity and you get to the point like I, I get to the NBA right and you kind of see like how it works like the politics that are involved you know what I'm saying like you see some people that might not necessarily be as devoted to, to basketball like and, and put the amount of time in that you did and and that's that's a, uh, it's a, it's a weird dynamic to be in because like you, like I said in the lyric, man, like I worked my whole life for it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so just just navigating that, man, it was, uh, I'm still navigating it to this day, right? Like I'm, I'm praying for another opportunity and I'm working as hard as I can. And it's not really about like getting the opportunity, it's about how you approach getting the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? It's about like the work you put in. It's not the, the destination, it's like the journey. Now let's get back to the interview. Man, like I said, after that year we went to the tournament, that whole year is like agents 
agents hitting the line, like, or sending messages through third parties, like, so crazy. like the noise, yeah, the noise is crazy, man. Like, you know, man, like the noise is crazy, dog. And so, um, you know, so once my season had ended, um, you know, I'm just like, man, what's next? Like, I know what I want to do. You right. know what I'm saying? At this point, like, I really know what I want to do. I had my daughter on the way, so I'm just like, man, I got to figure out what's next. Right. So um, I had a couple agents on the line. So when it came down to picking an agent, a lot of these agents was like, hey, yeah, Trey, we love your game, this, that, and the third, which I'm, every agent going to tell you they love your game. For every sure. agent going to tell you that. So <laughs> They like, we love your game. You can do this, that, and the third. And so um, they start talking about overseas from the jump. Right. So, you know, I'm thinking this, like, I'm thinking big, dog. Like, For sure. For sure. Like, 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 what you doing? Like, like, why would I be doing this if I'm thinking I'm finna already go overseas? Like, I'm thinking big. Right. So, like, I ain't come this far just to to box myself in. For sure. And so, um, and so yeah, so I had a couple agents. So from there, they start talking about, like when you picking an agent, they always told me, they was telling me this, like once my season ended, it was like, check out what clients they got already. See what countries them clients are already playing in, because that's going to let you know what's going on. You know what right. I'm saying? Like I didn't, I didn't, the, the people who I knew who were playing overseas, they were either like, who had played overseas, they were either done playing, so they really didn't know the market like that. For sure. Or they weren't necessarily, which I, have, I found out now, like they hadn't played in big countries, you know what I'm saying? Or they were playing in second Small and third countries. divisions. Yeah. Right. So it's like, so when you picking an agent, that's really, like I said, find out where, if you don't know nobody who already over there, in the, over there currently who can tell you what's really going on, then check out those, like check out that agent, check out like they rosters already. Tell them, send you some clients. Tell you, send, send you their client list. And not you know only that, <clears throat> not only that people understand too, is that the misconception that they work for you. You don't work for hey, them. Man, for and, sure. And, and lastly, if you can, if you can not, this ain't for everybody, but this this is the one that can, that can ha have your power of the destination is that, don't sign until they get you your job. You can deal with three and four different agents and not sign with any of them. But with that one agent job, even, then you they sign. Even with tell that. me that. they ain't even tell me that. But I knew some homeboys who like who ended up in some situation. That's really what. That's really how it should have went down. They should have did that. I did, but I was fortunate enough to end up. I ended up signing with Octagon, a big agency, and my agent like he a power. He like a power agent, like for sure. I ain't gonna say his name, but he, you see, like people see, sure. I see him on TV and stuff like that. Like, sure. like, and like that, but like that was my agent at the time. I'm now with a new agency slash agency slash sure. international. But um, at the time, yeah, I was signed to him and that's a super big agency. Like they got Steph, Giannis, sure. uh, they got, yeah. So they got MVPs in, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And NBA final champions, like they got them dudes. So, I'm, so I, I was fortunate enough to to come upon, to end up get signing with this agency. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, all they had to do was they ain't even really had to show me that client. Like, I mean, once I went on their website, I'm like, all right, this is what y'all right. working with. And when I talked to the dude, we ain't even talk about overseas. We talked about straight. Hey, he like, hey, I'm finna fly you. you. We flying you to Phoenix for the summer. You gonna live here. You don't gotta worry wow. about nothing. We taking care of it. Um, wow. we gonna let we gonna send you the flight flight information, the workouts. You work. You got a trainer. They talking about nutrition, all that stuff. You know, like sure. real next level stuff, dog. Like, sure. like really like breaking things down to you, breaking the game down to you. And no other agency was really like providing that. And I mean, for me, like I said, I was fortunate because a lot of like, that's rare. Like I found right. that I know like that's rare. Like a lot of kids ain't being, a lot of these agencies ain't gonna necessarily do that. And a lot of these agencies that they do do that, then they want money back. I ain't sure. had to pay none of that back. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like this right. agency, like they really was trying like, like we had a mission, we had a goal and that's what we was trying to do. For and sure. so um, like a lot of these agents, some of these, a lot of these agents, they just want to get you jobs. And you know what I'm saying? So, so that's the other the, thing. So they get the percentage. 
Exactly. And so some of these, like I said, you got to check out the client list, see one, see what countries they go to. And then, like you said, they work for you. So right. you need to be dictating to them. So <laughs> you need to tell them like, hey, let me get, you need to talk to so many clients. Right. Right. Don't just see that. You talk to them. See how that client feeling right now. See how you feel about his contract. Exactly. The other thing is he getting paid. Because mm. you don't get a lot of, get paid over there. A lot of guys don't get paid. A lot of guys go over there and play three, four, five months without seeing a dollar. Mm. You playing for free. Mm. You away from your family. You going to two days. You sleeping in crappy hotels. Mm. The food don't taste the same. You can't hug and kiss your mama. For sure. You can't wake up and just walk in Walmart. Right, right. So that's the, you thing, need... <laughs> that's the thing people don't understand that the stories they don't understand is it's not it's not peaches and cream at, at all, you know. Oh man, oh man. So that's the thing. So, like I said, when you when they, when it came down to picking an agent, it was like, man, let me see, let me see what y'all got going. I had one agent, this man was like, Yeah, I got this pool party pull up. I'm like, man, Brian trying to talk about no party, bro. I'm trying to go get like Right. I play basketball, dog. For sure. I ain't no party promoter. Right. <laughs> right. Right. I'm trying to go hoop, bro. Right. Like, he like, yeah, I got this party. Done it. I'm like, man, we talk, we ain't, no, nah, we can't do business, dog. For sure. This is the same. So let me ask you, because I know you spend some some time in, in the Summer League, NBA um, mm -hmm. Pro Summer League. Talk mm -hmm. about that and then talk about um, the, 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 the transition overseas, like the food, the culture. Mm -hmm. You know that mm -hmm. was that was kind of you know um, alarming a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, so summer league was dope, man. Great experience, dog. I played with Phoenix, man, and um, and at the time they were a young organization. This was when when Earl Watson was the coach, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I was there for like it's been like two weeks, you know, with the organization, man, and just just being there and just you know seeing how everything how how players operate in the NBA, and you know D Book was there. And he didn't play with us, but just to see, like he did practice with us and stuff like that. Like I didn't play a lot. So when you don't play it, like in the NBA is really, they're not gonna tell you what to do. They wanna see what you gonna do. Mm. Again, the higher, the higher level you go up, the more responsibility you have as an individual, you gotta be about it now. Like in mm. college, in college, they gonna make you do that. You know what I'm sure. saying? In high school, your mama gonna make you do high school. Sure. College is your coaches. When you become a pro, nobody's gonna make you do anything. When sure. you get to the NBA, they have the resources. It's on you to take advantage of that stuff. So I didn't play a lot, but I did, you know what I'm saying? I, I was like, man, I'm in the gym with their coaches all a lot, man, trying to learn, trying to get better. Cause that's that's why you see guys like Cameron Payne. Now finally producing because it's an everyday thing, you know what I'm saying? You don't know wow. when your time, you don't know when that opportunity gonna come. You better be ready though. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You gotta stay ready so you don't gotta get ready. So um, man, I learned a lot, man. And you know, just being able to see and learn different things and, and things like that from these coach from the from that coaching staff, it was uh it was it was a blessing, man. But that's the big leagues though, man, and it's the big leagues for a reason, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And if I ever get it, you know what I'm saying? If I never ever get another opportunity, as and as you know, those opportunities don't they don't just come yeah, like yeah. that. For sure. Yeah, man. For so sure. um when you do, you gotta be prepared you because you never know. And a lot like of that is just gotta, like right place, right ready. time. Like you said, you gotta stay ready, so you gotta get ready. Mm -hmm. And uh Trey, you got this uh this uh this 2020 organization that you and Trav, I think uh uh a couple of guys are involved with. Um, talk about that and talk and talk about why it was uh it was uh it was started and put into the community. Man, so so the 2020 Youth Organization, man, was started really because of me and Trav, because of who we are, you know what I'm saying, and our story and our background and you know, having that support system and coming up just in the city of Charleston and understanding that, hey man, like we we made it because of the foundation that was built, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, and that you don't necessarily got to be the biggest, the fastest, the tallest man, but if you got heart, you got discipline, and and you got the, you know what I'm saying, you got the right to support system, man, the sky, like, you know what I'm saying, you can do whatever you want to do. For sure. Especially in this basketball, in this basketball world, and you know what I'm saying, basketball has treated us good because we treated it good. For sure. You know what I'm For saying, sure. basketball is nothing but it's, it's a medium, it's a tool, and, um, you know, if you treat it right, it'll definitely treat you right. So we created 
2020 organization, man, to, you know, just help athletes to try to really to try to shift the mindset and the culture down here. For sure. Um, you know, I think just right now is just kind of like a misconception as to, you know, what is success like with this back, like with, with the basketball, what, what exactly is success and how to be successful That's in the point. city. And, um, you know, we're just trying to just, just trying to like help shift the culture and just through our experiences and, you know, trying to create, you know, different things and, and also trying to, you know, do it through community service and community outreach events, man. So, um, that's a good point. That's a good point. And, um, you know, what would you say, you know, like you talk about, you know, coaches love knuckleheads, not distraction, but the mentality because they go hard. What would you mm -hmm. say, you know, to a young guy in Charleston that mirrors your situation? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That, that like use that young jit that just look up to other players, but didn't know you had no path because mm -hmm. you had no, 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 no really no direction. You had a couple of resources you can, you can, you can call on, but what about that guy that mirrors Trey um, that's in, in middle school, freshman right now, like six, three, six, four, got talent, mm -hmm. but he's surrounded by, he's sinking. He's surrounded by all these other different, you know, distractions that's holding him back, mm -hmm. but he's got talent. What do you say to him? I mean, I would say, like I told you, man, if you are that, you don't gotta, you don't have to play the part, but you definitely gotta play the part, man. Like, be be who you are, do what you want to do, because I'm not gonna lie to you. I play, I got friends. A lot of my friends never went to college. None of my friends ain't student athletes. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But this is what I want to do with my life. You know what I'm saying? I only get one life, so do do it. If basketball is what you want to do, do it. You can't do both. But understand that you don't have to play basketball. You get to. So basketball don't need you. The game of basketball will continue to go with or without you. Right. So understand that you don't have to do this. You get to do this. So since you get to do this, you need to treat this game precious. You know what I'm saying? If things right now, but in doing that, it's a journey. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And in that journey, you got to stay focused. You got to stay persistent. You got to be patient. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, and, and really in this journey, to me, the journey of basketball, like the journey of life, man, is all about becoming. You know what I'm saying? As a young kid, you are trying to become mm. something, but in order to become something, you have to unbecome something. Mm. I like you it. You know what I'm saying? So like in order, so mm. in order for you to, so in order, in order for me to, to get to this place, I had to unbecome mm. my environment as a child. I ain't saying forget who you are, forget sure. where you come from, forget the lessons, forget the people, because I, like I told you, I don't, I ain't forgot my people. For sure. I forgot my homeboys, but I did have to unbecome, a part of me right. had to unbecome in order for me to become. Now let me second, let me second you on that. And, and what Trey is saying is, is absolutely right. You know, what he's saying is, yeah, be who you, be, do what you do, be who you, who you want to be. Because look, you took a what, uh, six, seven, maybe eight year hiatus from, from what you didn't want to become, right? Mm -hmm. And you sacrificed those time to make your, your life different. I'm not saying better because who's judging, they make your mm -hmm. life different. But mm -hmm. you still have those friends, you still have those associations. And that's all you're saying, it's all about time management and decision making, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to just not have this be my friend anymore because he, he's in a different mindset. But over here, I got to do my thing. And once I get to my certain point, yeah, I'll circle back. We're still going to be friends mm -hmm. all day. But I got a different mindset. I got a different focus. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, you, that's you got to that's what you got to think about. You got to, man. I think a lot of what happens in this city, like we all get a, like survivor's guilt. Because I suffer from that a lot, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, mm -hmm. bro, I made it. But mm -hmm. my homeboy, he was, he was just as talented. He was even more talented than me. Mm. But he ain't make it, you know what I'm saying? So you kind of like, man, dog, like, 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 what can I do? You know what I'm saying? Well, I need to go back and help. But it's like, man, but let you me, can't but really let me, let me sec, let me, let me kind of, you know, and that's not your, that's not your, that's not your obligation, right? Exactly. Not, of exactly. course, that's your feeling, but you got to find a way to, to get rid of that feeling because when you, when mm. you, when you, like you say, go back, when you go back and you step your foot in those environments, it don't, mm. it don't, it don't always turn out the way it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. I think your focus need to be focused on your, your family, your kid mm -hmm. and any other friends that, you know, support you. And that's, I, was, I forgot I was going to say before, 
is that when you're making that decision, when you're making that disconnect, if your friends don't continue to support you and you're disconnect, they're not man. your friends initially. They ain't your friends, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. You know what I mean? So that's and a, I that's stand a easy on that, man. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a easy. On that. Yeah. Like my home, like my homeboys, man, I swear, like if a lot of people see them, they'd be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Them ain't the people you want to hang around. But man, I promise you, man, they ain't tell us they, man, these dudes ain't never told me to do nothing wrong ever in my sure. life, man. You know what sure. I'm saying? Like if they finna do something wrong, they for sure finna be like, man, bro, you need to get from around me right now. Like <laughs> for sure. They for sure. like they were like, man, these dudes, but they support me till this day. And I never once had to do something that's not me. For sure. Just to please them. That's that's true. And they were and they were and they right. would never and they would never ask me to do that. And so like for so for a lot of these kids, like I said, man, if you if, if it is like survivor's guilt, like man, you gotta you trying to hold yourself back so your friend can catch up, like bro, you're gonna fail, you're gonna you're lose gonna fail every you time. You can't carry all that on your back. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Even sure. though you may be strong, you strong enough, yeah, you're strong. You can come from Charleston, man. Know you're strong, but you can't always carry that on your back. And sure. if you got friends who out here, like like if some kids out here right now, they doing this and the third, like, but you an athlete, you you wanna do, you wanna you want better for your life. If, if your friends don't rock with you, that means your friends, like I said, right. I still got the same friends for from sure. when I played on Mall Park and on Harmon Field. For and sure. man, you know that for all sure. them friends ain't college athletes or businessmen sure. right now. I still got for those sure. same friends and they ain't never asked me not one time to do something that ain't me. That's what's up. He made a name for himself as a star for the College of Charleston basketball teams in the mid to late 90s. And now, Jermel President is doing what he can to make sure that the Charleston area kids have a chance to succeed on the court and in life. So I want to, you know, give some of that back to the community as well. Um, after college and after playing professionally, uh, I started the Day Foundation just to, to be that wealth of knowledge to the kids in the community and, and parents as well. College of Charleston Hall of Famer Jamel President said he saw a need for this while he was in school. So he founded the nonprofit Day Foundation. And its philosophy for success is based on what he calls his oatmeal recipe. Let's go and finish together. Basically, teaches the game of basketball, focusing on skills, development, nutrition, and education. Not only SAT, ACT type stuff, but education for parents in how to navigate through the different levels of athletics. So, you know, and Trey, in closing, man, you know, we created something, Day Foundation created something called the Oatmeal Recipe, which mm -hmm. is uh, skill development, um, education, and nutrition. Mm -hmm. and so I want to throw those words at you um, and, uh, individually and see, you know, your take on how you feel about them. And talking about skill development. And, and when you talked about earlier, you, you admittedly said, I wasn't, I, I'm not the highest skilled guy in the room, but you still made it through hard work and dedication. And not mm -hmm. from the skill set from on the court. It's a skill set off the court from listening, you know, talking, mm -hmm. you know, talking, being around, you know, positive people. How important mm -hmm. is skill development to you and how do you apply it to your everyday life? Man, so skill development is, especially as a pro, that is, that's probably, probably like outside of just maintaining your body. And like you said, the nutrition part outside of that, then that's, that's really key, man, just every day trying to you know, craft, hone your, hone your craft, um, you know, add things to the bag, man. So that is, to me, that's key. And as kids, nowadays, basketball is skill. For sure. For sure. It ain't it ain't necessarily a big X's, X's and O's game now. It's about sure. making shots. Not necessarily, I tell a lot of kids, man, don't be a shot taker, bro, be a shot maker, because that's what sure. this game is. For sure. You gotta make, if you don't make shots, people don't necessarily, people don't necessarily you better be doing something else that's amazing. Right. That's Flow if you ain't making shots, but um, so skill development that is that is key, man. Just being being able to be comfortable on the floor at all times. You know what I'm saying? So that's just to me that's key. Just having being comfortable with that basketball in your hand, being comfortable with the basketball out of your hands. For sure. So um, I mean, with a lot of a lot of things I do now is like I said, it's just more you know, trying to for me in my position is just being comfortable on the perimeter, but also being comfortable trying to play in the low post. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Being able to come off screens, being able to, to run the wing, score in transition, be athletic. That's what I tell a lot of wing players, be athletic. When you get to the NBA, when you go to workout, 
they're gonna tell you to don't. They wanna see the flashy, <laughs> don't you practice with your friends, they're gonna tell you to don't. Cause that's what they wanna see. So right. be athletic. Right. Um, that's that's awesome. what they wanna see, man. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, the next one is uh, education. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, uh, I think that's that's a major ingredient into into success. And, and just from, you know, uh, uh, someone that's playing the game and they're taking a the three point shot when they got 10 team fouls. Right. That's just not a, a, a smart play. Um, so how is education you know, important to you and how do you apply it to your everyday life? Mm, yeah, so I mean, of course, edu one, educate yourself on the game. That's definitely key. People love high IQ players. So if you got sure. skills and you're a high IQ player, you're going to always have a job, you know what I'm sure. saying, this game. Or not necessarily, you in in a job, not in the sense of as a only as a player, but on someone's sideline as a coach. So you sure. got a high edge. So if you got a high IQ player, you've educated yourself about the game of basketball. Like I said, you treat it, that's treating the game right, it will treat you right. For sure. For um, sure. I mean, just education, just in the sense of, you know what I'm saying, we wanna talk books. I mean, bro, knowledge, man, you should never stop learning. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Just cause you're a basketball player, that doesn't mean you don't need to know about financials. You know what I'm saying? For sure. About, you don't need to be financially literate. Just cause, sure. you know what I'm saying? Of course, nowadays the big thing is 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 one thing that's becoming in, into that's coming into the forefront is mental health. And a big part of that is, you know, being knowledgeable, man. Like understanding, understanding your feelings, understanding how to express yourself, mm. understanding how to be a part of a team. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Understanding how to to get through difficult situations. And the only way you understand to do that is through education. Good point. Um, last one is nutrition, man. My biggest thing is for athletes, like you said, not taking care of their body. They get that resource to get those things on the, on the, on the, on the top tier level, but <clears throat> athletes in the AAU program, travel basketball, you know, sodas and candies, you know, fast food, you know, just really not needed in that, in that realm. So what do you think, um, how important is that, uh, nutrition and, and how do you apply it? Man, you know, it's crazy. So the day of the 2020 league, we got uh, the nutritionist from the Real Factory out there over in Hanahan. She coming to uh, Tierra. She's coming to talk to the kids about nutrition, man. But nutrition nutrition is key just because, um, you know, that's, that's what's going to help you sure. play 40 minutes. That's what's going to help you go out there and perform the way you want to perform. Like, sure. if, you're not, if you're not hydrated, if you're not eating right, like that's gonna kill your body. So, um, you know, for me, my biggest thing is hydrating. I was never a big water guy. Sure. I would love that. I drink that Gatorade, but that water went in my, I, I don't want that water. Right. I drink the soda though, but you gotta understand, especially in Charleston, this humidity, you gotta hydrate. For Hydration sure. is key. Eating the right things is definitely key because you don't wanna go load your body up with, with junk food, with fast food, and now you out here feeling sluggish. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And now you can't, or now you ain't got that extra burst. For you sure. Play, you going to play AAU and y'all played three games today, and now you was at KFC, you had a, some chicken, you had a four piece and a biscuit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> and now you trying to figure out why you sluggish today, man. Like, sure. But, and, and, then, and then, and the thing is, now you slug is you play bad, now you don't miss out on the scholarship. Kids don't even, like, you don't even think, like, you don't even think, Huge you don't even think about it in that way, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, sure. all of that ties in together, just like, like you said, like the oatmeal recipe, all of that ties, definitely ties in together because you gotta, your body, your body is your temple, you only get one of these, man, so eating right, is when that's a part of your pre injury prevention. For sure. You know what I'm saying? That's injury prevention is key. And so um, it's a part of your recovery. And um, sure. if you want to go the higher, you want to go to the next level, you need to act like it. You know what I'm saying? I was a pro before I became a pro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For sure. For like sure. I told you, I was in high school. I saw, you know what I'm saying? I saw college basketball players. So I started to behave like a college basketball player. For sure, for sure. When I was a, when I was in college, I saw pros. So I saw how pros acted. So sure. what did I do? I started acting like a pro. So for kids, you like, oh well, this is good, this is good. Well, 
I'm gonna let you know, like, if you wanna get to that level, you don't just get there and then begin acting like it because then it's too late. Right. I'm gonna tell you now, and that kid from Atlanta or that kid from Houston, he round pros. All day. You know what I'm saying? He round pros, they telling him these things and he listening. And that's kind of why I want to get, like, that's kind of, like I said, there's kind of a misconception in Charleston to where it's like, hey man, in these other cities, these kids, the stuff these kids getting educated on, educated on. We got pioneers. They, they didn't learn that. They didn't just get to that point. They didn't just get to Kansas and then started doing that. Right. They already had a little knowledge on that before they got there. For sure. <clears throat> Well, that's what's up, man. Um, I really appreciate the conversation, man. Learned a, learned a lot about you. I know, I, you know, I watched you and, you know, always looked at as you as a little brother, legit coming up. But to right. see you mature and see you come out, you know, uh, as a young man, I'm proud of you, man. And I, I appreciate your time coming on the podcast today. No, man, much love, man. We family, dog. You know, it's nothing, sure. man. It's sure. Man. All right. Well, I know you got a 2020 lead today, right? Yeah, <clears throat> man. About the. Uh... I gotta go make a run and get ready for that, man. All right. <clears throat> I appreciate you, man. And we'll we'll talk to you soon. No problem. Stay safe, big dog. You too. All right. So there it goes, guys. Another one in the books. Uh Trey McLean talking about his uh, his road to success, things he had to do, um, dealing with uh, family, friends, um, everybody's, you know, um, in the midst of um, being a successful student athlete. All right, thanks uh, Trey for coming on. Coming up next, we got uh, my best friend Carl Thomas um, to talk about um, his journey as a student athlete um, from Florida, Tampa, uh, Western Kentucky, to College of Charleston, San Antonio Spurs, um, the list goes on. So um, look forward to that coming up, all right? Be right back. What Jermel is doing with Today Foundation and the approach he's taking to help develop young athletes, first of all, getting them prepared from the academic standpoint, which, as you know as well as I do, Bobby, that's the most important element to try to get them to eat healthy, to be able to train properly, to get the proper education, and then hopefully for those who are talented enough to have a chance to move on to perhaps even get a free education by going off to college. But I love what Jermel is doing. It's a wonderful program. Hopefully more people in the community will get behind it and, and some of the businesses involved as well to help sponsor this program. Because these are the kind of things that every community needs. Looking out for the best interest of a youth. The future of this country is in our youth. And everything that we can do to help prepare them better for that is absolutely wonderful. And, and I can't express adequately enough my admiration and respect for what Jermel is doing and hopefully he'll get a lot of help from a lot of people you can follow us on facebook and instagram at Jamel president and on twitter at president Jamel. make sure to subscribe to this podcast as i'll be bringing you a new interview every month